When clients come in for therapy for me, I usually have them fill out a form first. And in the form, I ask them kind of what's going on, a brief um, summary if they can, because it kind of helps me prepare for how they're viewing what's going on in their relationship. Many times if they tell me, I think my partner's having an affair, I'll ask them, do you know what step of the process they're on? And they go, what step? No, I don't. I just know they're moving away. Because I think there's 11 steps that actually help you understand where a person is in a physical affair with another person when they're married. You see, what happens is when you're married, there is a bond there that's incredible. And it's different than just living together. And when you're married, nothing happens real fast because of this bond. So anything like an affair, as you can imagine, it wouldn't happen quickly. It would be a process, a process of steps, if you will. So let's just go through these steps because if you're in that place where you're concerned about your partner and you know that something's going on but you don't know what it is, then it may help you talk to a therapist or talk to someone else, even them, about what's going on because you will be more aware of what step or how far advanced it actually is. The first one, your partner leans away from your marriage. What does that mean? They're just not in anymore. You know, we always tell people, you know, you both have to get into the room together. You can feel that they're in the room perhaps, but they're leaning, they're by the back door, waiting to get like leaning out of it. They're no longer invested the way they were. Step two, they become aware of another person. They're so aware of another person, but they aren't really into it yet. They're just very aware of where this person is, who this person is, and this look this person gives them or has given them in the past. Number three, they begin to have innocent meetings. These innocent meetings are an opportunity for those two, the new people, the, your partner, your spouse, and, and his new person, to just kind of meet up. And they're so innocent because nothing has happened yet. This may even be a climb to before an emotional affair, although this is more about what happens physically. If you would think about it that way, there's really not anything there yet other than an interest. Number four, innocent meetings that are planned. Now the meetings become planned and carried out. So it's no longer they're just meeting. Okay, well, let's meet Wednesday. It's that these are planned and they're being written down somewhere. When you write something down, now you're carrying a new intention for it. Whether you're writing it on your phone or you're writing it on a piece of paper, the intention begins to deepen. Five, you linger in conversation. What does that mean? That means when you have a conversation, you begin kind of, you're really thinking about what the person said. You're giving it a lot of attention and a lot of focus. And you know what used to, who used to get that? Your partner. So this is the part. Number five is usually where the partner starts seeing the void. Like they don't talk to me. We don't talk anymore. We, we don't discuss. We don't talk about things going on in the world. We don't ask each, we're not interested in each other's values or where each other are anymore. The six ones, our conversations begin shifting to feelings. Now, when this shift happens, this is when the emotional part thickens and deepens. When the emotional part deepens, then this makes the affair more solid. And it also, not only that, this is the part that secures the potential physical, which we're gonna get into. This is when basically, now you're starting to form judgments and opinions, and they're all gonna be glorious at this point about this other person. Now you begin having isolated meetings. That means no one else can go. There's a seclusion. 
because the two of you are excluding others. This is where it becomes something you're starting to protect. You're putting boundaries around it. Now, the boundaries you're putting around this are not your partner, your spouse is not privy to. So you are creating another family at this point, if you will. You can call it whatever you want. And I do have a whole video that I'm gonna do about rationalizations and how the defense mechanisms cause those. But at this point, you are creating another entity with this new person. And that's an important thing for you to understand and hear up front and for your partner, for your spouse too. You, the embraces become more affectionate. Now you give yourself permission to touch this person and this person gives themselves permission to touch you because now there's a feeling in your conversation your meetings are more excluded from others. They're basically secret, if you will. And now touch is going to start. The embraces become more passionate. Why? Because the embraces now that you have together are so positive, so powerful, so much endorphins. And don't forget, there's a whole brain chemistry that is allowing this and it is changing as you create this new family with this person. At this point, you could call this an emotional affair, right? Because there's no cheating yet per se, no physical cheating, except where, depending on where you touch the person. But what's very important about this, at this point, you have already violated the marriage and betrayed your partner because you have created another family. And for sure, that's a betrayal on your spouse and your potential children with this spouse that you already have in marriage. Lastly, adultery happens. That's number 11. And then after adultery happens, no matter what you say, you will be caught. And that is just what happens. And at this point, your spouse usually knows whether you told them, whether anybody else told them or not, they are so lonely for you. So they are so missing you in the room with them that whether you're there or not, you are gone. And I think what's so potentially powerful about this video is sometimes when you hear this and you hear these steps and you hear it talked about objectively like this, you realize that what you have created with this new person is no different than what thousands have created with somebody they thought they were in love with. But in a sense, it usually is not that. It's a bona fide affair. And, and that's a human condition. That's a human choice. That is a very bad choice, a very dishonorable choice, especially for your spouse, who is still very much connected to you. I hope this video helps you, not only if your partner is in one of these steps, but if you are the person in the step, this is a good time to go to your partner, tell them you need their help and tell them everything. So if you want to save your marriage, your marriage will have a chance to survive.